life. Hey guys, welcome back to Code It All. And uh, today I have another project in mind for you guys. This is a really awaited project, and it's like one of the projects that you definitely have to hear of unless you're living under a rock and you haven't heard of it. It is the to do list application. So, whenever you start front end development or any uh, web development or web development in general, or maybe even other a uh, other develop okay. I'm just fooling around here. Backend or front end development, you have to start with a to do list. So, this is basically a, start, a starting point for all starting project for basically every single uh, developer in the universe. So, that's what we're going to be building. And obviously, I have my name and my to do list. So, I have this button hooked up. I can just enter something like finish your homework. So you get this really simple, nice to do. And if I want to complete it, it gets completed. The past reduces and we have a line through. I can obviously toggle between the states. And if I want, I can finish it. I can make it go up. And it goes up with a really simple animation. It's not on the page anymore. So if you add another one, you see it's not there. Perfect. Seems pretty okay, right? Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. So. We can start with the project, and I'm just going to have this at the side over here. I'm just going to keep it. Okay, I don't have two monitors. Okay, except sometimes when my dad lets me use this. Just open a new window. Okay, and let me just open the file. To do app. Is it this? Wait, did it? Wait, to do app. Get a new one. To do app. Took one. Okay. Here we go. Whoops, I'm open that. Okay. Um get this bigger. Get it this size. Okay, so this and that seems perfect. And whenever I want I can always refer to my other code, okay? Because when I'm teaching and coding, it doesn't really work together. I try to make the best, but sometimes I forget what I'm supposed to code through and do that sort of stuff. Sorry for that. So I just have to do that. And now, before if, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And now we're going to get going with my index HTML, my style, that CSS, this weird crap happens all the time. The shit. Okay, get the style CSS hooked up, and I want the script JS. So after I got the script JS and style CSS index HTML, I can just get uh, exclamation point tab to generate all this boilerplate for us. With this, is Emma at work and in Visual Studio Code is pre-installed, but another stuff and other. Tax editors, you need to install it manually, so I'm just going to call it to do app. Okay, hook up your CSS. Okay, hook up your script. Uh, people don't generally put this in the head, but I learned that there's a way to put it in the head and actually call defer on this to make sure they, to make sure it loads after the content of the HTML. Okay, so now we can definitely jump into our body. We don't need much, just an h1 with a class of title and that can be whatever your name is to do list so so my name to do list and we can have a form now form i don't need an action i don't really even use this class but let's just go on i don't need this class i'll just remove it Okay, and I'm gonna come over here. Mm, and I need an input. Okay, input type of text and place holder. Enter your to do's. And I give it an ID to do input and the class. Uh, Nah, I don't need a class. It's like the only input on the page. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to give it a button of type of submit. And class of to do button. Okay, no. 
TN and Knight D to partner. Okay, and obviously we need font awesome hooked up to this. So I'm gonna just copy the border plate from where's my other app. Here it is. You can find the link in the repository, or otherwise, what you can just do is type cdnjs cdnjs and font awesome, and you will get these two links. Just copy them over. It's really not that hard. Okay, just do that, or I'll have this repo link down in the description. Get those links from there and paste them into your stuff, to your code. That way, you'll have access to all the font awesome stuff. Okay. And now I can come here for the button and I can come up to my HTML. Just get that i tag, that funky little i tag. I don't want to have to, like, you know, go to Fauna and get that thing hooked up like that. Paste it here. And I can come out of my form. Uh, and then go dot to do list. And obviously, ID if. To do list. Okay, my headphones are hurting me. Ouch. Okay, seems fine now. But yeah, to do list. So over here, the, we're going to be inputting this to do. We're going to be feeding the to dos into the to do list div, into to do list container using JavaScript. So the basic layout of the to do list, I'm just going to put them here. It's going to be a div class of anim. Okay, you'll, you'll see why later. Class of to do, and then I'm gonna in that to do, I'm gonna have a h3 with the text, then gonna have a div with a class of buttons, and buttons of two with you know, fun, awesome stuff. Okay, so we're gonna be feeding all this using JavaScript. So I'm gonna just comment this out, keep it in mind just for the syntax for us. Like to uh, you know make sure that we not do any mistakes in the JavaScript and I might just open this up with live server to see what's inside Hopefully everything is clear until now live server is Just an extension you should check out my VS code video the one that I did where you set up all my VS code stuff Okay, check that out And yep, this is my to do app. What I need to do is head over to my styles and I'm gonna feed in some basic basic styles, okay? So I'm just, I'm just importing the font, epilogue, and yeah, I'm just take this. So basically, I'm importing the font right here, which is epilogue. I'm importing the weights 400, 500, and 700, as you see here. And in my root, I'm declaring a primary color, which is this darkish color. You can just copy it and. Uh, star symbol uh, we set all your paddings margins and put the box size in the border box just makes it a whole lot easier to do like calculations with padding and margin and stuff and for the in the body you can just set the font family font size and the background image you can put it as a linear gradient and obviously you should not make it repeat and you can put the height of as 100 bh so this is a pretty simple css so automatically puts it like this for us and obviously I can go select the h1 text along the center and I can give margin top to rm oh that gives us the scrolling I'm just changing the padding top okay now I can just style my form form I'm gonna go display Play flex uh, basic flexbox commands. Okay, just play flex, justify content center, and align item center to put it all uh, here. And obviously, I will give it a margin to space things out. One REM should be pretty okay. Mm, I gave it. Mark it up on REM. Same styles, okay? Oh, this the file. Oh, I put color black. I really didn't need to specify that. Oh, and I put margin top to REM. 
I'm gonna just do that real quick. And uh, I obviously select my input. And I need some padding. I don't exactly remember the number that I used. Let me just get that number here real quick. 0 0.75. 0.75 REM. Or is it EM? Yeah, it's probably this. Font size. Font size 1.4 REM. Make it big and nice. And obviously I want to inherit the font family. And uh, I want to make the placeholder. Well, you know the you know the text that says uh, input enter your to dos. That's the placeholder. And uh, I want to change that color to the primary color that we said. Boom, boom. I know you're here for the JavaScript. Just CSS. It takes time. And now, obviously, I need to style my button. I have a class given to it, and that is to do BTN. Select that. <sighs> Come in here. So I'm gonna just copy the styles here, okay, real quick. And I'm explaining them all to you, okay? This is to do button here, though. Okay, so I changed the font size to about 2 rem and the padding to 0 0.5 rem. I put the border to none, which means I eliminated all the borders there and put the background color to the primary color. And I, you know, made the background the dark thingy and added a little bit of border radius, which gives it rounded corners and made the cursor pointer. So whenever you hover over, you get this nice clickable indication and I give it transition. So I'll come back here, copy up this part. Okay, I don't need this as of now. So these are just the hover and focus states. So I'm gonna just change the background color to white and set the color to the primary color. So when I hover over this, okay, let's see with oh it's button, I just need a to do button. Oops. Okay, so let's get going. Sorry, I'm just a little bit of time. I'm just a little bit tired. That's all the JavaScript uh, CSS we need right now because we don't, we can't see anything yet. I'm just, I'm gonna just look up the look up a little bit of JavaScript so you can see what the heck is going on. So obviously, I'm a, I'm not gonna write it out, but you obviously need your selectors here. Just copy these. I don't want to type them down. I'm too tired. Especially right now. Okay, and I just want to make a tiny, tiny error, uh, tiny, tiny update. To do button. Okay. So, as you know, there's nothing really complex here. I'm just um, referencing all the items in HTML that I acquire and putting them in the JavaScript so I can perform operations to them. And uh, I'm just comment down listeners. I'm going to do functions first. Event listeners. Okay, so for our event listeners, we obviously want the to do button to listen to one. So to do button dot add event listener. Obviously, we want to add it when we click on it, and we want it to, you know, add it to do. So that's going to be a function that I'm going to make, and it's going to come in right here. Const Add to do, and I'm gonna pass in an event uh, parameter. You'll see what that is. It gives us an uh, gives us an access to a lot of different properties. But we're just gonna be using one. So right now, what we want to do is remember in HTML, we thought we were gonna feed this with it from our JavaScript, and I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna go const and in equals to document dot create element. And that's obviously going to be a div, and I need to give that anim a class of anim. Okay. Anim div. And uh, I'm going to copy this, paste it down for the to do. 
because it's obviously going to be the exact same. To do much better. Um, and now I want to generate my H3. My uh, to do H3. And name. And we want the element to be created that's h3. And I'm gonna give it a name class. And what the heck, class, what the heck did I do over here? Uh, I think I didn't give it any class, did I? Nope, I didn't. I don't need really a class. And for now, I just want the name to have an inner text. That means the text in of and the text which is inside the h3 to be hello. So and I want the to do buttons div so I'm gonna just paste the stereotypical thingy it's not exactly what I was trying to say I'm gonna just paste this thing the base uh, thing where we have a class and that sort of thing so cost buttons is a div with a class list of buttons and I'm gonna create individual buttons so get them here check button complete button and I want to have a button and obviously the complete button should have a class complete trash button and then give it a class of trash so that's pretty nice and let's take a look up here nothing actually happens because hey we didn't actually you know i'm just gonna click this nothing gonna happen oh my god why you see here it's refreshing every time i hit the submit we don't want that to happen we want it we want all of our processes to actually take place what we can do is e dot prevent default the events dot prevent default to prevent the form from submitting and reloading so we can do is hook this up Oh, we haven't actually appended anything to anything, so it's not actually going to work. We haven't appended this entire thing to the to-do list. Um, so while I'm here, I'm just going to add the font awesome uh, classes really quick. I'm just going to go to my previous one to add them. Okay, complete button. Wait, wait. yep, I'm going to go here. Uh, I really don't need this. Alright, there's my complete button and this is my inner HTML. It's fine. And I want to go to my trash. Bad pun, but I want to go to my trash button. And I can just put this up here. It's BTN, but it really doesn't matter. I'm going to just change these to BTN. BTN. Oh, here's always button. Damn it. And apparently I put a div here. Damn it. So, and it's uppercase here and it's uppercase here. Damn it. And it's supposed to be like this here. Uppercase again. Woo! Perfect. So, ready to go? Oh, not that yet. Then. Not yet, and we need to append everything, make it a proper structure like this. Right now, they're just floating elements everywhere, okay? We need to make them, we need to make them have a proper structure. So, append stuff, append elements. Bring about a structure. Okay, so what we're going to do is first, uh, to do list, the one we, we have gotten up here, the append child. I'm gonna append the anim element. So and then anim dot append child. I'm gonna append the to do. If that's what we're supposed to append, yeah, that's what we're supposed to append. And I'm gonna take the name. The no, I'm gonna take to do dot append child. Of name if that's the thing and copy it down. 
and I'm gonna add buttons. And I need to add buttons that append child complete btn. And obviously, I need to copy this, get this down here for my trash button. Um, so we got everything hooked up. Hopefully, I'm gonna add one thing. So you see, obviously, it's not really, it's not that pretty yet. But we got a hello, and we got these two nice buttons. Pretty amazing. So I can add more if I want, but it just keeps saying hello, hello, hello. So what I want to do is actually make sure that it gets the whatever value we enter into this input here. So that's pretty straightforward and simple. You might not know this, but it's going to be really simple. So over here, we just have the end of text saying hello, hello, hello over and over again. But I don't want that. I want the name dot inner text to actually be the to do input dot value. So the value that we enter into the to do input. Perfect. And now we can save it and I can enter hey. Or uh, what's up? So we get a what's up and I can do. We get that. But the thing is, we don't want to have the user to actually, you know, delete the option. Suppose I entered that. Enter it. I don't want to have to delete this option before typing again. I just want it to automatically clear. So that's also pretty straightforward. I want to clear the input. Clear the input field. I can obviously do to do input dot value equals nothing. Seems perfect. Let's go. We got that and we got it resetting all together. So that's pretty awesome. And you see there's not much difference between two. Actually, there's no difference between the two. Okay. So now we just, I'm going to just bring up a couple of to-dos, okay, wait, let me just bring up style the to-dos, and uh, add the remaining JS, okay, so those are the two to-dos, we're going to style them based on that, okay, so come back here, and uh, dot to-do, Background color white. Okay, we got the white. So I'm gonna style my dot anim. You'll see why. Okay. Uh, just well, I don't wanna write my styles. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just a little lazy. I don't feel like doing anything right now. But I had to shoot the video. Okay. So I want. Let me just copy these. The styles. Okay, I don't have another monitor, else so this will be much, much better. Okay, so these are the styles. It brings about this thing here. It's pretty more pretty. And we get the width of 70%, so this is exactly 70% of the page. And uh, we have the margin zero of auto, which pushes it automatically to the center. We have the background of white again, margin top of one uh, REM to space out every single to do. We have a little bit of padding inside the to do, and obviously the opacity is 0 0.9, making it mildly transparent. Transparent and we have a border radius of 1 rem make it a little bit rounded. Display flex to actually align all the items on the same page. Align items center to vertically align them and justify content space within to push them to the far corner of the page. Whoopsies, if you heard that. Sisters, rag doll, weird doll. I hate that so quick. Okay, um. So, I'm gonna copy these. I'm not my favorite, just these. So, and I'm gonna explain those styles to you, don't worry, okay? It's all gonna be fine. You're not gonna die. So, these styles are dot. So, I'm just gonna give a style of margin right of 1 REM to my buttons. So, each of my buttons is spaced out properly. And my complete and my trash. Both my buttons have a border radius of 50, or 50 EM, which means they're perfectly rounded. I don't know why they're completely not rounded, but I like them this way much better. And the cursor is pointer, see, pointer, okay. And my bo I don't have a border, and my background color is this weird trash or red color thingy, red orange. My margin is um, I have a slight margin to the right, and my height is thirty pixels, width is thirty five pixels, and oh, whoops here. Now it's perfectly rounded. Good job. Color is white, and the text align is center and transition. You look for this uh. Transition is out for this transform, which is hooked up here. 
from both the hover and focus states of both the buttons. But one thing we don't have is basically, I'm gonna just type it out. Dot complete. We need another background color because you know we can't have a red background color for complete. It just totally, it just violates the laws of the universe, the entire universe breaking apart. Uh, we have this thingy. Let me just copy this line. Back here. Paste it. Wait. Oh, boom. So we got these nice freaking operating icons. They don't actually work properly, but it's really nice. Okay, pretty nice. Now, there we go. I'm proud of myself right now. I don't know why I'm not even done. But I feel hungry. It's 7 o'clock over here. Because of my school schedule, I really need to sleep early. This shooting took a lot of me louder of me today okay so um i still my i still up my to do's they're pretty nice okay so this is done but obviously nothing is going to happen just yet and i want to add the delete and complete functionality so what we're going to do this is a little bit different okay so i'm gonna get my to-do list dot add event listener obviously click and i'm gonna do delete completed so we're gonna do both of those stuff in one um in one function so i'm gonna just read that const and we need the event property again okay um here we can set an item which is event dot target event dot target i'm going to be showing you that what exactly it is in one second console log target oh no item so i'm gonna just add the to do add remaining js oh so okay. uh get my console out get that here and i can click on this and we get the target is the div with the class of to do okay and over here if we click on this it's the div with the class of to do again but with different h3s and stuff we click this text the target is the h3 click on the button oh that's the svg that i clicked on if you click on the button here we have the button which i clicked on it's pretty it's pretty sweet so i'm gonna just close my console right now uh take this out so that's the event.target hopefully you got that um and we can do this thing like if the event.target wait if the item okay or the event.target it, it's class list and the number one in that class list equals to delete or trash we can perform this code okay we can do the code for the deleting one so uh, okay so if you press the trash button i'm gonna just take a moment here to enter this okay i'm gonna just comment this out Bring this out here. Okay, I'm gonna refresh it one sec. Uh, okay. So we have this right here. Okay, sorry for those texts. I was just saying, hey, okay, those sort of stuff. Um, now, um, wait one sec. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna enable this just so we see what we're working with. So basically, right here in our thing. So if we okay, wait. I'm gonna get my developer tools out just to illustrate to you. Okay, so right here we have in our to do list, we have this class of anim. Inside that, we have a class of to do. Inside that, we have, I just want to navigate down to this button. Okay, so this is the trash button. Okay, the trash button. Okay, the bad button again. So, trash button, what we want to do is remove the entire to do with the trash uh with a click from the trash button so what we need to do is get a reference of the to do element for the to do class the div okay the div with the class of to do we need the reference to that so basically the parent element of trash i'm just going to refer, refer to that as trash is the div with the class of buttons and the parent element to that is the to do so we need a reference to that so there's a property called dot parent element so dot const to do just do that cause to do equals to item dot parent element 
dot parent element. Okay, I just did it in a on a, I just did it in a different way, okay, than you might see for most developers. Or maybe you might find the solution a lot out there. Not really sure. It's, it was mine. But that's how I felt was pretty nice to do it. Um, okay, so this is the to do that we have reference to. Um, so I'm just mm. okay. I'm gonna just say anim dot class list add. Come here. Ooh, well, talking. I'm. I I lost track of what I'm supposed to do. See, this is the moment when I need my code. I don't talk while coding usually. Yeah. So if it's trash, I have I have an access to both the to do. I call it parent element here. Don't believe me for that. Um, we don't need this console log here, but I just include it just for my purposes. I have a reference to the anim class. I have a reference to the anim element thingy as well. In the parent element dot class let's add equals to uh, add a fade. So I have a class of fade onto my parent element. And yeah, that's it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do right here in no, this is not the file. So I'm gonna get my to do. Okay, I'm gonna add the reference thing later. To do dot class list dot add fade. So unfortunately, or fortunately for some of you, we need to enter in the realm of CSS. Okay. I don't want to have to type it all down. I'm gonna just paste it. Okay. So I have this keyframes of fade. Okay, it's pretty simple, but I do want to, you know, write it. Ooh, whoops, I might have misspelled this. Opacity. It really doesn't matter. Oh, it starts with a opacitive 0.9. Whoops. Wow, there are a lot of bugs in my code. Oh, maybe just this one. So I can copy this, come back here and paste it. Nothing actually happens yet. And I can go for, there's a class of fade and a little bit of code on that. Yeah, animation. Okay. I want to show you one thing, okay? I'm going to comment this out for, I will comment this out right now. So what happens if I can type hey, click this. So basically, after the entire animation is done, it basically comes back to its original state. We don't want that. We want it to actually, you know, the animation to finish right there. Okay. So we have this animation fill mode forward, so it doesn't actually reset. So I'm going to go, hey, and I'm going to delete it. Okay. So we see. Okay. So if we come up our other developer tools and I get this. So we have a to do here still. Okay. It's just, a, it's just that it's not being shown because of our opacity. Everything is still there. We don't want that, okay? Because if we get a next to do up here, we actually get them below these two to do's. We don't actually want that. We don't want it to pile up on each other. We want the to do to actually not be there, okay? We can have empty divs, but no content should actually be there. So for that, we need reference to our anim element. So const anim element equals to to do equals to to do dot parent element. So after this, um, we can add anim element dot inner HTML equals to nothing. So now we can try this again. Hey. Okay. Oh man, wait. So we actually got it removed. It's not stacking on top of each other. It's not like stacking below. It is completely removed. So I can remove this. But where did that transition go? That what actually happened was it deleted before we actually could add that class and before the animation actually started or ended. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to add an anim element, or I think it's the to do. Um, the add event listener, I think it's the to do. It is the to do. Let me just go check my code real quick. Yeah, it's to do. WebKit of animation that it's ended. Sorry about that noise. Okay, WebKit transition end. Okay, so this that's the thing that we need to use. WebKit transition end. That means after the animation or the transition ends, we want to run this block of code and not before that. So we can just get the bracket thingy here. 
uh, arrow function syntax and I can bring this in here. Save that, make sure it's the same, yeah it is. So now I want to add a to do, I'm going to refresh it. Okay guys, and I can delete it. Oh, it's going perfect. We don't have it here anymore, so I can add a different one. It's going to just be right there. It's gone. It might take a little time for it to go, but that time doesn't really affect our project over here. It's pretty perfect. Okay. So we have our trash working as per how we want it to work. And now the only thing that's left for this video is um, to hook up the completed button. So we need another statement. If item dot class list the zero thing equals completed or complete, I think that's what I put. Um, we want to add a certain bit of code, and I think we want to add a class list of completed and then work our way in it through the CSS. That's what we wanted to do. I'm not wrong, and no, I'm not wrong. Okay. So. Yeah, it's the exact same thing, okay? So I'm gonna just copy this line of code here, bring it back here, and uh, to do dot class list, we want this time want to toggle it because we can toggle between the, the completed and the un uncomplete states. That's what we call it, or incomplete states. Um, if we use toggle, so that's pretty nice. And we want to, I don't know why I did that. It was just my keyboard thingy on um, purpose, unintentionally. Okay, so we want to toggle the class completed. Um, so over here we can head back to our styles, come down here, and go like dot completed text decoration strike on a line through. Okay, and the opacity is 0.5. Let's see if that works. Okay. okay um, what the heck. Uh, what's happening? If I click, oh, I got this extra equal to my code broke because of that one thing. Okay, so I have this here. Okay, where's my line through? Can't exactly see it, can I? Oh, I spoke that damn thing wrong. Save it now. You should see it. Yep, we got the line through here. Seems perfect, and uh, I can just add a transition. It's fine. Completed and completed. Hmm. Oh, I can just transition it. I don't need a hover thing. Um, transition all all ease to fifty milliseconds. To sixty. Okay. The fuck. The heck did I delete that? Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I swore. Hope you guys didn't catch that. Okay, now you obviously got it. You would obviously rewind to check it. Bad people. Okay. So I can take this. And now I obviously have the transition hooked up and working properly. So I can click this and get back here. Okay. Oh, it isn't clicking because I'm SVG. I can try getting um, dot fa trash dot fa check. To have a pointer events, pointer events none. So hopefully that's perfect now. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, works perfectly as per it's supposed to. Okay, so now you might be thinking, oh, uh, you got my guys might be thinking, okay, why didn't you include stuff like you know local storage, filtering through completed and deleted stuff. All of that, I mean, I might add segments onto this video. I mean, I generally, I have it in my to-do list to, okay, I have it in my to-do list to create a video on the local storage in JavaScript. Okay, so I have a plan to create that. So perhaps in that video, I can just quickly hook up um, a local storage mechanism into this piece of code. So that automatically when you refresh the browser, nothing actually uh, disappears. And uh, I can actually add a priority level to this maybe in a future video. But this is going to be it for this video. I just want to keep it as simple as possible for you know, beginners there. 
um, the score was barely 57 lines and then also obviously I can make it shorter um, yeah I was, uh, there's so many ways I can make it shorter right here okay so catch you guys in the next uh, catch you guys in the next video please subscribe like and share and see ya bye bye